Good evening. Ah, excellent. I think we're ready to get started here. Uh, my name is David Winchell. I'm a public participation specialist for the Department of Environmental Conservation here in DEC Region 5. Uh, welcome to the second of four public meetings on the New York State Department of Transportation and Environmental Conservation's draft amendment of the 1996 Remsen Lake Placid Travel Corridor UMP. The draft UMP amendment is also a draft supplemental environmental impact statement and a draft river area plans for the Middle Branch Saranac River, the Main Branch Racket River, the Middle Branch Moose River, and the North Branch Moose River. As such, the meetings we are holding are also considered public hearings pursuant to and in compliance with requirements of the State Environmental Quality Review Act and Wild Scenic and Recreational River Regulations. A final scope for this project was released on October 22nd, 2019. You may have already heard it was announced in today's Environmental Notice, Bull Notice Bulletin that we'll be holding a fourth public meeting on Thursday, December 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the State Office Building at 207 Genesee Street in Utica. Okay, now that we're over with the formalities, I just, all I can think of it is Yogi Berra. It's like deja vu all over again. We've all been through this a few times and uh, here we are again. Um, but I want to point out that what we are proposing here in the draft UMP is not a compromise, as many people say. We actually, DOT, DEC, and New York State consider this the best, most effective, and economically beneficial use of the corridor. An 85 mile scenic railroad south of Tucker Lake, passing through some of the most scenic, remote, and pristine parts of the Adirondacks, providing one of the longest and best scenic train experiences in the country. And an all season, multi-use recreational trail north of Tupper Lake, connecting the Tri Lakes communities and providing a variety of recreational opportunities for visitors and residents of all abilities. The proposal will bring the most economic benefit to the, big, to the communities along the corridor. Clearly, the many municipalities along the corridor that have passed resolutions in support of this think so. Some things have happened since we all gathered here together. The Adirondack Park Agency amended the travel corridor, de corridor definition. New York State purchased the parcels in the corridor near the North Country Community College. We have an access agreement with the Lake Placid North Elba Historical Society, allowing the public to ask, access their parcel at the end of the northern terminus, terminus of the corridor. We have developed a historic preservation plan and a low loan branding statement. Those the historic preservation plan and the logo and branding statement are appendixes in the draft UMP amendment. We do ask you to look at that. We're seeking public input on those as well as the main draft amendment. We have a simple agenda for tonight. Uh, we're going to be given a presentation. Representatives from DOT and DEC will be given a presentation with an overview of what we're proposing in the draft UMP amendment and then I'll be followed by a public comment period where we want to hear from you. Public comments will be limited to three minutes to ensure everyone who wants to comment has that opportunity. You, you need to have put your name on the cards at the table. All we need is your name if you want to speak to me. If you cannot fit your comments into three minutes, there are other opportunities to get comments to us. You can send them in via email or by letter. Deadline for comments is close of business Wednesday, January 8th. We actually, that was in the environmental notice bulletin today as well. We've extended, because of that uh, fourth meeting, we're extending the comment period as well. I will also point out that, okay, excuse me, that contact information for where to send comments and also how to download and view the draft unit manager plan are available, or excuse me, the draft unit manager plan amendment are available on the sign-in table as well. Comments are given equal consideration whether received at any of the four public meetings 
or by email or, or by letter. So just be aware of that. It doesn't matter how we get them, we, we look at them equally. Uh, before we begin the presentation, let me introduce you to the DOT and DEC staff that are here. Uh, first of all, over here, Tall Guy is our Regional Natural Resource Supervisor here in Region 5, Chris Alberga. Back at the table in green is Supervising Forester Rob Daly. Uh, here in, I don't even know what color his shirt is, uh, is Forester Steve Guglielmi. He's the forester that's overseeing this, uh, the trail, proposed trail portion of the uh, corridor will be under his uh, management. And then to my left is DEC Region 5 Director Bob Stegeman. He'll be presenting the DEC portion of the presentation and the East DOT Regional Director Steve Kokoris, who will start with the presentation of, on this portal. Steve. Thank you, Dave. Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Steve Kukoris. I'm the Regional Director for New York State DOT's North Country Region, and we span from Lake Ontario to Lake Champlain, and obviously cover the northern part of the Adirondack Park. So let me begin with an overview. Uh, the Remsen Lake Placid Travel Corridor is 119 miles long. It begins in Remsen, Oneida County, travels through Herkimer County, St. Lawrence County, Franklin County, and terminates here in Lake Placid, Essex County. For background, use of the travel corridor is governed by a unit management plan, and we'll refer to that as the UMP. The UMP identifies opportunities for public use consistent with the classification of protected lands. The UMP also considers the ability of the resources and ecosystems to accommodate such uses. Currently, the 190 mile long corridor is designated as a railroad right of way. Constructed in 1892, the line was operated continuously until 1972. In 1974, the corridor was purchased by New York State. The state authorizes use of the corridor through two revocable use and occupancy permits seasonally. One is with the Adirondack Railroad uh, Railway Preservation Society, and their permit goes from April 1 through November 30th. And the other is with the New York State Snowmobile Association from December 1 through March 31st. I want to talk a little bit about the project scope. The scope of work as proposed in the UMP is as follows. From Big Moose to Tupper Lake, uh, we propose to rehabilitate all 45 miles of track. We also propose rehabilitating or constructing sidings with accessible platforms in Sabatis and Beaver River. From Tupper Lake to Lake Placid, we propose constructing a 34 mile long trail. We would also construct shared parking facilities at Tupper Lake and connection of the existing Tupper Lake Trail to the proposed trail. Lastly, we would construct new emergency access for the town of Tupper Lake through one of the parking lots. And I've got some subsequent slides that show that. We also have some um, boards up front that depict this in greater detail. So the rail service and trail junction in Tupper Lake will reimagine Tupper Lake to serve as the terminus for the rail and the gateway for the new multi-use trail. As mentioned before, construction of a new platform uh, will be done there. Uh, that platform will have a canopy and it will be for rail service. We also propose to reconfigure rail to minimize the footprint and provide separation for trail construction. We would install a small train maintenance facility and storage track and we would connect the rail service and rail trail to the depot. For the Tupper Lake South segment, the following are proposed. The track structure would be re rehabilitated for rail operations. So
So Big Moose to the south would have ties and ballast replacement as necessary. From Big Moose to the north, we would rehabilitate the track all the way to Tupper Lake. No physical alterations of, pass of passenger stations, bridges, or miscellaneous structures would take place as part of the UMP. And what we propose preserves the listed features, feeling, and character of the corridor. Uh, in addition to this, uh, independent of the UMP, we would have rail car improvements. That would include rail car rehabilitation and the acquisition of a historic dome car. So this next slide gives you an idea of what the dome car looks like. It was built in 1955 as Union Pacific number 9001. It has been acquired by the Adirondack Scenic Railroad and it's being refurbished with delivery expected by the end of this year. With respect to the rail service and rail trail junction in Tupper Lake, uh, I'll briefly discuss these before we move on to some graphics. So rail service improvements would include a 550 foot long raised passenger platform. In addition, passing track additions and alignments of the rail would be improved. We would reconfigure and reduce the radii of the Y section of the track and a storage building and maintenance yard with buffered, um, either buffered by vegetation or fence would be constructed. With respect to the rail trail improvements, the trail proposed to run uh, south of the trail bed uh, would join with the town and village trails in Tupper Lake and there would be new parking uh, that would allow capacity for snowmobiles as well. With respect to general community improvements, access to the Tupper Lake Depot would be improved. In, in addition, emergency route detour from Washington Street to McCarthy Street would be provided. Yeah. And so this, uh, this slide, I'll go through the, uh, the items that I just mentioned. So a new switch and a second track across Route 3 would be constructed that would replace the existing switch to the south. We would extend the existing siding and add a third track uh, for storage purposes. The new platform with the canopy would be located between the existing siding and the new third track and that is shown uh, difficult to see there, but uh, it's shown in the green color. That is the realigned Y track, and that, is, that allows the, uh, the engine to maneuver around the parked cars and make its way to the maintenance location if necessary. And what, what I didn't point out, I, I don't think I have a pointer here, but in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, that uh, inset diagram is actually an extension to the north. It should be uh, in the top right hand corner, but there just wasn't room uh, to fit it all in. So we would remove the existing Y and um, connection to the main track and convert the rail bed to trail and connect the new trail to the existing trail as shown uh, near the parking area uh, that would be to the east of the track. And uh, shown in the lower right is the end of the new track. That would also be uh, the beginning of the multi-use trail from that point to the north. And the new emergency access is essentially a uh, drive-through from uh, Washington Ave to McCarthy, McCarthy Street. Those two streets are currently separated. And we do provide uh, proposed parking um, both for passenger cars and for, as mentioned before, uh, vehicles with snowmobile trailers. And lastly, this is the improvements at Beaver River and Sabatis Station. So new 300 foot level, or uh, split level platforms are proposed for both locations. In addition, we propose to construct a double-ended siding at Sabatis, and that's in orange on the upper slide. I will turn it over to uh, Bob Stegman, Regional Director for New York City DC. Hello, everybody. 
Okay, um, I'm going to go through that. This is the stretch from Copper Lake to Lake Placid, which is going to be trail. And uh, what we're going to do on this one, in that section, all rails, ties, and railroad equipment will be removed between Copper Lake and Lake Placid, except the rails and ties associated with the side tracks at the depots will be retained for historical interpretive purposes. All historic railroad equipment and signs will be stored and used in the in the future for historical interpretive purposes. And the proposed 34 mile multi-use year-round recreational trail will connect the communities of Tupper, Saranac Lake, and Lake Placid. The trail will be constructed in the following manner. It'll have 10 foot wide compacted stone dust the full length. It'll have two and a half foot shoulders on each side. And the diagram, um, I'm sorry, I didn't forget to do that. Is that on there? Okay, uh, it'll come up in a minute. Um, the diagram depicts a cross section of the trail. The full length of the trail will meet ADA accessible requirements. There'll be five major access points will also meet ADA accessible requirements. And wherever practical, other access points will be designed to meet ADA uh, requirements. Um, the tri lake community see the, the plans we have what we have described as providing significant benefits both in attracting visitors and improving the quality of life of their residents. This slideshow shows some of the examples of benefits to the three villages in the north. Tupper Lake will have benefits from both the train and trail. It is very excited about the potentials of increased visitation, particularly in the junction part of town where the train and the trail meet. Saranac Lake also sees the trail and train depot as important components of the development of the depot street area. And both Saranac Lake and Lake Placid see the trail as being a central component of current and future trail networks. The photos in this slide depict the current and possible future uses of the corridor at one location. This is the causeway across Lake Colby. These next slides depict uh, the central relationship between the corridor and the trail networks in the Tri Lakes communities. This fits right into the recent legislation signed by Governor Cuomo to provide, develop a comprehensive plan for statewide system of non motorized multi use trails consisting of a network of non motorized primary corridors linked to and enhanced by regional and local non motorized multi use trails. So the point of this, and there's more details on this in the plan, but is the point of this is to connect to the, to the local communities, downtown areas. The draft UMP amendment also includes a draft historic preservation plan. This plan includes dis discussion of the historic significance ac activities and remaining infrastructure within the corridor. Description of the adverse impacts of the proposed action and preliminary mitigation efforts to address this impact. We are seeking input on the preservation plan during the public comment period, and as Dave mentioned, it's in the appendix. We also are planning a stakeholder meeting with local and uh, regional historic preservation organizations prior to finalizing the preservation plan and the UMP amendment. The corridor intersects four sections of rivers classified as recreation and two that are classified as scenic under the Wild Scenic and Recreation Rivers Act regulations. As such, the draft UMP and SEIS amendment also is a draft amendment to the, to the river area management plans for the main branch of the Saranac River, the main branch of the Racket River, the middle branch of the Moose River, and the north branch of the Moose River. Here's an anticipated schedule moving forward. I know it's hard to see, so I'll, I'll take a little time to help you understand it. Uh, finalization of the UMP will occur in spring 2020. Uh, rail removal and rehabilitation of, will be completed in the fall of 2020. Trail construction will begin in the spring of 2021 after the rails have been removed. 
and trail construction will be done in phases with co completion of the full length of the trail completed in 2023. The phases of trail construction have not been determined at this time. It's going to be a practical construction um, need. Uh, uh, here is the schedule for the public comment period. Due to the public request, in addition to the three public comments, um, three public meetings scheduled this week, we'll be holding a fourth one in Utica, as Dave said, on, on December 19th. We all have also extended the deadline for public comments to Wednesday, January 8th. Next steps for the unit management plan planning process are stakeholder engagement on the historic preservation plan, review the public comments received from meetings like this, finalize historic preservation plan, a letter of resolution regarding the impacts of historic features, finalize the UMP amendment with response to public comments, present this to the Adirondack Park agents for review and approval regarding the state land master plan compliance and then final UMP amendment signed by DEC and DOT commissioners. <clears throat> uh, here's the contact information for submitting contacts. Remember the deadline is January 8th. And uh, I'll, I'll turn this back over to Dave. I'll leave this slide up so you can see the contact information should you want to write it down. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. So the next portion of, and the rest of the meeting is gonna be receiving comments from you. I have a number of people signed up to provide comments. If you wanna make comments tonight, just go back to the table, put your name on a card, they'll make sure they get it to me so I can announce um, how this is gonna work. Uh, persons will be called in the order we receive the cards, except for elected representatives, we like to Give them the opportunity to speak first as they represent the people. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. Additional comments may be provided in writing. We have a timer up front, Chris Alberga. He will be raising these signs to let you know when you have one minute left. 30 seconds left, and when you need to wrap it up. This public comment section is a process for participants to provide specific suggestions or identify concerns with our proposal. Therefore, we ask you to direct comments to the DEC, not to the audience or to other groups. This is not a debate or time to ask questions. The audience should respect the views of all speakers, even if their opinion differs from your own. If you want to support somebody that you hear, we, we encourage you to clap. If you don't like what you hear, we ask you to just sit on your hands and be quiet. It's helpful if speakers clearly state their specific concerns with the plan and what they would like to see done differently. While the amount of support or opposition to specific actions is a factor in our decision making, this is not a vote, so it's not a popularity contest. Again, if you cannot fit your comment into the three minutes, you can submit them in writing contact information that has been said before is up here and on the table in the back and as I said earlier comments are given equal consideration the de again the deadline for comments is close of business Wednesday January 8th what we're going to do is have two speak two uh, note takers up here at the board they'll try to capture your uh, main points I also have a digital voice recorder that'll leave up here that'll capture everything that you say so um, with that, if our note takers could come up. And we've started recording, and our first speaker is Lindy Ellis, and she'll be followed by Pete Nelson. Thank you very much. So thank you tonight. I want to thank the uh, hardworking folks in DOT and DEC uh, for moving forward this process and getting the possibilities out on the tables and getting us to this point. My request is that we move forward in the conversion of the Remsen Lake Placid Trail conversion. And I do this as a small business owner, as the chairman of the Parks and Trail Advisory Board in Saranac Lake, 
and as a Franklin County legislator. I've talked in the past about the economic benefits that will be coming from a conversion of this trail, and that has long been demonstrated in many other trails across the country, and that includes uh, trails bringing bike rentals and shuttle services and lodging and restaurants and ice cream stores and bakeries and people who are going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks along the way and will just bring up small businesses throughout the corridor. Uh, for example, in Minnesota, they estimate that uh, multi-use trails are a $2.4 billion business and in terms of bringing in uh, spending into the areas and that for biking alone in their five different sections of the state, it's $44 million spending in each section of the state. So the economics is really impactful and this project uh, supports that. But tonight, I'd like to talk about the other benefits that we get for our communities and our families, uh, the ability for young families and young people to be able to go onto a trail, to be able to bike, walk, hike, uh, travel from one location to another in our communities, uh, be able to have the uh, ability to have a safe travel corridor, and uh, especially for the uh, folks who are now in our communities, they are attracted to our communities to be able to uh, have facilities like this. So we have seen that young families will be more likely to come and settle here because of having these amenities uh, for them and their families. So I really encourage this uh, trail conversion. I thank the DOT and the DEC for their hard work and I will uh, be pleased to hear everything that other people say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. Pete Nelson, and you'll be followed by Jim McCullough. Good evening. Dave, always a pleasure. Uh, I'm here just representing myself, uh, but it's uh, no secret to many that I have fingers in lots of pies. Uh, and one of them is wilderness advocacy um, at a, a very uh, passionate level. Why is a wilderness advocate standing here to endorse this plan? Because it's a good idea. You know, we're, we're very good at division and rhetoric and debates that go on a long time in the park. But that doesn't have to stop us from recognizing good ideas. When I've written about this project before, I've picked on Jim McCulley. Jim and I might not agree on every issue related to wilderness access and protection. <laughs> but apparently, we can recognize a good idea. So I look forward to us moving forward. I have two very specific things that I want to bring up to the state uh, that I think are very important. Uh, one is, I'm not sure that everyone, and particularly the state, grasps uh, how important it is to treat this as a nationally significant project. I know about rail trails uh, from many places that I've lived and other things that I've done. This is a world-class uh, rail trail and railroad solution. It's a world-class concept. And in the Adirondacks, we often think too regionally. We're often balkanized. We need to market this properly, and we need to have a strategy that says this is something that's going to appeal not just people in New York, but people in Pennsylvania, people in South Dakota, people in Missouri. They will seek out the opportunities that a world-class solution like this is going to provide. We have to think big in terms of how we present and market this. The second thing, to me, is even more important. I'm not sure that the state fully grasps, necessarily, the importance of Tupper Lake as a transportation hub. And I've noticed some Tupper Lakers talking about it lately, and I think that's great. We are in the midst of a transportation revolution in the world. This transportation revolution is going to enable us to have distributed transportation solutions that change the game for how people can move around, how they can recreate, how they can do the things that they need to do, engage in commerce. 
this rail trail, this railroad junction, and the fact that Tupper Lake is already leading the park in electric vehicle infrastructure, which you may or may not know, all conspire to give Tupper, Tupper Lake an opportunity to be a hub for transportation, not just recreation, but transportation where we can think about how we move people. And I highly endorse this project on that basis, and it needs to be considered in a larger picture about what transportation really means for the Adirondacks. I thank you for your time. Dave, once again, it's just always great to see you. Have a nice night. I want to say that's something you and Jim McCauley agree with also. <laughs> Jim McCauley. So we sing Kumbaya together often, so. And he'll be followed by Howard Kemp. Uh, Jim McCulley, uh, Lake Placid Snowmobile Club, and uh, Arda. <clears throat> um, obviously, I support the, the first 34 miles of trail, but in the opening comments from Dave, he talked about this not being a compromise. He talked about it being the best economic plan for the corridor and for the residents of New York State. How do we know it's the best economic plan to run a train that's going to cost us $34 million in just infrastructure costs from Utica to Tupper Lake when the current uh, uses on the corridor for, for train service are not covering their own cost. We are, we are talking about there is no cost benefit analysis to say yes, this will work as a train. There's no cost benefit analysis that it would, of what the trail would do for the area. Last night at the Tupper Lake meeting, there was a lot of conversation about e-bikes and how e-bikes are changing the dynamics and how far people can travel. And you know, one of the things I heard from DEC staff and, uh, and uh, DOT staff were they thought that putting the trail from Big Moose, which is uh, the current terminus of the, the rail corridor, um, the, or the rail use, going from there to, um, with trail all the way, was not a good idea because yes, during the winter time, sure, there'd be a lot of people that used it. They'd bring a lot of economic growth in a, in a totally desolate area. Um, but they thought during the summertime there wouldn't be any use. But that's because they didn't look at the e-bike situation, in my opinion. They don't, they've never really looked into what the real impact of trail from the old forage area, area to Lake Placid is going to be. And I, I think that's a, a very important to do. And I also wanted to make a comment on, you know, you're, you're talking about building a uh, platform for people to get off the train in Beaver River. There's one business in Beaver River, in case all you folks didn't know, and they want the tracks out desperately. The tracks ruin their business. These people basically work nonstop because the tracks are, are hurting their business so much. And I, I just find it really strange that we don't have an economic impact study, but this is the best economic plan and we're forcing something on people who don't want it. So that's all I have to say for today. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Howard Kemp. And he'll be followed by Rich Sapiro. Good evening. Um, I, I, uh, might as well give a plug to the club I belong to, Trail Finders in Peru, New York. Uh, I had a little while where I wasn't, didn't belong to them, but i back with them again. Anyway, I'm exalted that, the, that this is finally happening. Um, I know I attended meetings over in the Sar Saranac Lake uh, Town Hall, and it must have been at least six, seven years ago now. And they had one in Raybrook here, I think a couple years ago. And this is the only common sense, the, the part from Tupper Lake to, uh, to Lake Placid where the tracks are finally being removed. Uh, it's the only common sense uh, way to go with this. 
multi-use trail. Um, they, uh, there's the areas all in the northeast. I've heard on, on I listen to a lot of talk radio. I mentioned at that meeting Pennsylvania, Maine, New Hampshire, but all over the country where they've gone to, from rails to trail. Uh, and as far as winter time, yes, I am a snowmobile snowmobiler, snowmobile uh, uh, proponent. Uh, but also, in this, uh, as far as that, uh, the winter time, I think we can all uh, uh, coexist. Uh, cross country skiers, dogs. I mean, people have their out, out there with their dogs. I've heard there have been problems. If I see any problem when I'm snowmobiling, I will report it. I can guarantee you. And but as far as the rest of it in the summertime, it's a, it's a win-win situation with the bikes and the hikers for having this trail without the <laughs> without the the rails. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Rich Shapiro, and then Bob Maswick. Hi. Uh, first thing I want to say is I, I've been a member of the stakeholders group uh, working on the trail end of this for four years now or so. And it's actually amazed me that we have uh, three New York State uh, organizations, three towns, three villages, about four or five uh, organizations all working together as a group. And amazingly, we come to consensus on things and, and, and we brought this forward. I've never seen such a disparate group of organizations work together so well, and, and, and it actually amazes me. But getting on to the purpose of this. So in my business, uh, one half of my business is running bike tours. We run bike tours in Northeast United States and Canada, and we see bike paths heavily used, especially up in, in uh, the Montreal area and Quebec area. Uh, and there are stone dust services similar to what we have here. And as you approach each of the small towns or villages along these paths, there are signs for the small businesses, driving the people from the bike paths into the villages to, <laughs> to purchase things, whether it's an ice cream cone or a sandwich or whatever. And personally, I look forward to riding from Sanac Lake to Tupper Lake for lunch of all dressed foods or Racket River Brewing and go home again. Something that with my slim body, I can't do on the existing roads. They will really, just kill me. Uh, I get calls my business, people, tourists in the area ask me where's the trail they can take their kids on to ride a bike. And the closest thing we have to that is they come to go around Moody Pond in Saranac Lake. Because uh, it's a very low traffic area, but there are no trails that you can take kids on to ride. We've all been focusing on the tourism dollars coming in because that's, that's the big drive, that's the big thing. But there's a lot of benefit the trail is going to bring to the residents of, of the Tri Lakes. Uh, one of the slides I was up here earlier uh, showed the trail going through Saranac Lake with all these <laughs> asterisks along it. And those, I view it as it's a controlled access highway going through Saranac Lake for bicycles, pedestrians, etc. And the stars are the, the access points, the interchanges people can get off at to go to the various sections of Saranac Lake. So people can go from one end of Saranac Lake to the other without having to use the roads. It, it's very beneficial. Also, there's a lot of people living in Saranac Lake who work in Raybrook, work in uh, Lake Placid, many of them in low paying jobs, don't have cars, and this will allow them to bike to work, which they really can't do uh, very well right now. And the uh, last two things is one, as a suggestion, I'd like there to be a connection from this trail to the Meadowbrook campground so that people can use the trails that are in there. And just a comment at the end to follow up with Jim McCulley's. I think having the train on that, the lower section, the southern section, will be a $34 million waste of money in about 10 years. We'll probably end up going to trail the whole way, but we'll have to let that play out. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Bob Maswick, and he'll be followed by John Driller. Good evening, we've heard a lot about economically beneficial use of this trail. Um, I'm here to tell you that I'm the guy that's driving a lot of that economic benefit. 
I have been fortunate enough to travel all over the world riding my bike. Vermont, uh, Colorado, Europe. It's really interesting to come around a corner into a courtyard and see 500 or 1,000 bikes and everybody sitting there having a sandwich, a cup of coffee, a piece of cake, whatever. Um, and there is a great, great need for this trail in this area here, not only for people who just want to go from point A to point B, but also for the, for the families in the area that want to just simply get out and ride a little bit. Um, you know, I have been, I, I'm the guy that drives to Lake George, uses the battlefield bike path down there, ride down to Glens Falls. I'd go down to the Capital District, use some of the bike trails down there. I guess the one comment I would make to both DOT and DEC is, take that parking lot design and double it, because on many, many weekends in a lot of these different bike paths, you just simply cannot find any parking spaces there. Um, that's really all I've got to say, thank you. Thank you, Bob. John Driller, who will be followed by Tony Driller. So thanks for having this forum. Um, I live in Saranac Lake and work in Lake Placid. I'm neither a railroad or snowmobile fanatic, though I enjoy both. What I am a fan of is this area and this community, and I want to see it thrive. I want this plan to be the best for everyone in this area over the long term, and I'm not convinced that this plan is that. Um, I'm struck by the politicians and various people describing the size of the projected benefits that supposedly would come to the region by ripping up the tracks versus the known benefits of running the train coupled with the logical and significant benefits of connecting the tourist hub Lake Placid to the town of Tupper Lake by train. What about the costs? I wonder if anyone has seen the budget. This is a huge amount of money spent for only a promised return. Does the 45 million cover all construction to completion? Is all the money allocated before starting? What's the budget for ongoing maintenance? I would ask that the full budget be acquired or guaranteed before any damage to a viable economic resource is destroyed. At least the train generates revenue that can be put to its own maintenance. The rail trail must be supported by taxes from day one. Will any non-local politicians support this in future tough economic times? Let's face it, this is really for the benefit of snowmobilers. Tourists will preferentially hike in the hills relative to a gravel trail. That's why they came up here. Bicyclists will enjoy it, but none will come specifically for such a short ride. Serious road bic bicyclists won't ride on gravel. Mountain bikers come up here, ride on more rugged trails than a path. Um, just as a digression, I've bicycled from the Mediterranean to the Arctic in various countries throughout Europe, across this country, I, both mountain and this, so I, I, I have a little bit of uh, knowledge on this. Um, Cross-country skiers already can use the, tra the rails as can snowmobilers. Every snowmobiler I know has a trailer and truck to carry them around. The suggestion that he won't, that they won't be able to, we'll be able to get snowmobilers from the south unless we rip up tracks, is just not true. I believe a low year has over 40,000 train riders who mostly stay and eat at least one overnight. Do we know we will get similar returns from snowmobilers? We do not. No offense to Tupper, but it'll take a lot to make it the tourist economic hub that Lake Placid is now. People continue to be drawn to the little city nearest the high peaks, and Tupper would likely benefit much more throughout the year with the scenic fun connection to its attractions from Placid through Saranac Lake by rail. Saranac Lake will benefit more that way as well. I'm not saying there won't be a benefit from having a bike trail, a walking trail, but I think it's going to be much better if we have both or the rail. All three towns would benefit from an economic synergy. What happens when gas goes to six dollars a gallon or more? It's going to. What happens if there's too little snow? Look at Big Tupper. Will we get the promised surge from people coming up to snowmobile? Even to visit at all, even in the summer. Then an efficient train via Utica becomes a viable, affordable way to get people and money into our community and products out. What happens if we once again have an economy utilizing our mineral and lumber resources? How will we affordably get products in and out with efficient rail? So here are my recommendations. Then I'm done. 
do an unbiased study based on existing usage of economic <coughs> benefits versus costs of ripping up the tracks for snowmobilers use compared to having a train run between Lake Placid and Tupper Lake and even Lake Placid to Utica. I agree we should have an economic study, unbiased, from both sides perspective. Consider the cost of doing what is done in many US cities and in throughout Europe where tracks coexist with other activities such as bicycling and in roads. Concrete plates, the height of the rails are put between the tracks. The paths uh, or roads alongside are graded to be level with the height of the rails on the outside. The rails are flush to the ground, allowing multi-use. That way you could have all uses side by side, given the width of the existing right-of-way. <coughs> Compare this to the cost of ripping up the tracks and trestles and replacing with gravel. Three, commit to only stopping the train once all the money has been guaranteed for the entire project. Certainly wait until the legal issues have been resolved. Do not leave us with a destroyed railroad and no multi-use path. John, you really need to wrap up. Okay. Um, and then this is critical. This will be my last point. Guarantee that the entire right-of-way will be available into the future as a transportation corridor if this area needs it for that again. Thank you. Tony Goodwin and Bill be followed by Steve Urquhart. Uh, well, uh, Dave Winchell opened last night's meeting and tonight's meeting by quoting Yogi Berra about deja vu. Well, having been on the Citizens Advisory Committee in 1992, I've had a lot of deja vu moments since then. I therefore heard many, and I've also heard many, many projections concerning the cost of rail re rehabilitation and the amount of revenue that we generated from ridership and the number of jobs that will be created. There have been more recent projections in a study by Stone Consulting and the ASR's own business plan, but for the purposes of this presentation, I will cite the projections used in drawing up the 1996 unit management plan that came from a study by Freight Services Incorporated and that became the foundation of the plan without seemingly any question of their validity. The UMP projected that the cost of rehabilitating a track between Lake Placid and Saranac Lake would be $1.4 million. That included making the section north of Big Moose capable of equipment moves. The actual cost was about $7 million. After four years, the projection said Lake Placid and the Saranac Lake operation was supposed to generate a net profit of $245,000 and create 75 jobs. It may have covered its costs, and store owners did report an increase in traffic on days when the train was running, but I think it would be hard to find more than one or two jobs new, uh, let alone the 75. The final cost of the Big Moose track rehabilitation, as proposed in this study, was close to the original projection, but after four years, total revenue for runs to that destination was supposed to be $703,000, with a net of 69. For the past two years, there have only been about 10 or 12 runs to Big Moose each year. If each run averaged 300 riders, and most were adults, the 4750 ticket price would have only generated about 160,000, a little bit less than 703. And the 46 jobs in Big Moose? <coughs> the current projected cost of rehabilitating the 44 miles of track from Big Moose to Tupper Lake is 18 million, I believe. But there has been significant deterioration since that estimate, so the cost will clearly be higher, probably much higher. From the proposed operating timetable in the ASR's business plan, uh, it will be a nine hour round trip. Now just how many people will choose to spend their whole day on a train uh, through the woods? And if they just ride to Tupper Lake and back, it doesn't leave them much time to uh, stimulate the local economy and create jobs. And based on the cost of a ticket to Big Moose and the additional 44 miles of travel, an adult ticket would be about $67. And a family of four with two children at, the, at that children's rate would be over $200 for that outing. So my advice to you, DEC and DOT, is that you need to determine just how many riders will be needed to at least break even on this additional service. If the railroad can't break even, then you will be committed to providing an ongoing subsidy just to try and save your initial multi-million dollar investment. Thank you, Paul. Steve Urquhart, and he'll be followed by Joe McCurdy. I'm Steve Urquhart. 
And uh, I don't want to see any money spent on the rail section until we've had the trail come in and we've had a chance to see how successful it is. I'd like to begin by pointing out that trains are not always the green option they seem to be. Uh, of course, I take the train to New York City and I couldn't imagine major cities without it, but uh, when a train is not filled to capacity, it's actually a very, very wasteful form of travel. And I'd also like to point out that this is not a discussion that's unique here to the Adirondacks. Um, when the highway system came in, it was a technological shift and it killed small lines all over the country and all over the world because the economics weren't there anymore. First for passenger travel, and then thanks to the 18-wheeler, even for small freight. <clears throat> so it's called a free market, and 50 years ago, the, uh, the market spoke and the, and the railroad went dormant. And we can't turn back time. Nostalgia is not that important, okay? People from Syracuse and Albany, they don't want to go to Utica and then take a nine-hour trip up here. And then when they get here, they don't have any local transportation. The trend today is Uber and Lyft. It's towards transportation, which is more convenient, not less convenient. And, and if nostalgia, if it so, sells so well, let's just go back to a horse and buggy trail and run that up. <laughs> right? You can't turn back time. Do you want to use historical medicines when you're sick? Our, our economy needs a lot of help here. And I'm afraid when I see how few young families there are. In Serenade Lake and Lake Placid, uh, we've had to combine even to form one ice hockey team. Uh, Tupper Lake hasn't had one for years. And so we don't need to be held hostage by these rails any longer. They're, they're preventing a much more viable option of a rail trail uh, from taking place. So uh, I'm very passionate about the, uh, uh, the issue. Um, certainly, I think when you look at why people come to the Adirondacks for our natural resources, they're coming to hike, they're coming to bike, they're coming to paddle, they're coming to ski, they're coming to climb. But where can they bike? If you bike between Lake Placid and Saranac Lake on Route 86, you are taking your life in your, in your very hands. Uh, there's nowhere for children to bike. Uh, it's, it's such a popular activity and we, we just offer nothing. So uh, thank you for the time. I, I'm sympathetic to the railroad buffs. The railroad of the future, it's driverless and it rides on the highway system. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Joe Mercurio. <laughs> I'm Joe Mercurio, I'm in Saranac Lake. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Adirondack uh, Recreational Trail Advocates. And in fact, I'm actually president of a mistake I made years ago when I went to a restroom during the board meeting and came back to find I'd been elected on the grounds that I was the least controversial on the board. I think Jim McCulley, Tony Goodwin, and BQ did permission. And you can go on. But anyway, uh, artists started 10 years ago. We've been hard at work. I was 71 at the time. That makes me 81 now. I don't have 10 more years to go. And I want to see this thing happen long before that. And I'd like to be able to ride on my bike rather than the wheelchair. So uh, I don't have an awful lot to add except to, you know, uh, bolster what has been said in support of the efforts of DEC and DOT to this point. Uh, Pete Nelson really stole part of my uh, words here when he talked about world class because I, I'm absolutely convinced that this trail is going to be world class and it's also going to be drop dead gorgeous. And the people are going to come from far and near to ride this thing. I have friends right now who, who travel as far away as Florida, Virginia, you know, to ride rail trails. And uh, people are going to come here for this. There's a whole history to show uh, how that's happened elsewhere. And the economic boom to this community, it will be a, it'll be a game changer. But it'll be a game changer in terms of lifestyle as well. As Lindy has pointed out, there are people who are going to choose to come here uh, because of that rail trail, uh, given the choice uh, of not coming here or that not here. So uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I uh, have some doubts about the, uh, you know, the train portion of it, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. But I'm actually convinced that this rail trail is going to be a winner, and it's going to be big time, and we're all going to benefit from it 
greatly. So let's get on with it and make it happen. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Joe was our last speaker tonight. I want to thank everyone for coming out. I particularly want to thank the speak those who decided to make comments and stand up here. Um, again, get those comments in. We have two more meetings. We have a January 8th uh, deadline for comments. You know, tell your friends. And, and please look at the historic communication or preservation plan and the branding and logo. We want to hear what you have to think about that. Thank you and have a safe night. See your honor. See ya. Yes. <laughs>